Go for it. the Jagdpanzer 38, commonly referred to as the Hetzer. This is a fully operational uh, running vehicle within the museum. This is the 7.5 centimeter uh, Pac-39, the L-48 gun. This can still penetrate a T-34-85 at 700 meters. Very low profile, uh, good sloping armor at the front, really good ambush vehicle. This thing can create hell, basically. The only sort of downfall it had with the gun itself, because it's slightly offset to the right, our travis to the left is very limited. We've only got about a five degree left travis. To the right, it's 11 degrees. So it's a very narrow field of view. But when you go out to say a thousand meters, that arc is still quite, quite large. So this was made in January 1945 at BMM, the Skoda factory. This one actually fought around Prague, uh, got damaged, went back to the factory, got repaired, but didn't see any further service. And it went to the Swiss and they upgraded this vehicle to the G13 model. But when this vehicle went to uh, Access Track Services for full restoration, they took it right back to uh, the Jagdpanzer 38 variant as it should be. There's a couple of ways that you can tell a Hetzer from a uh, G13. This one is uh, G13 track, so it's a slightly uh, newer track. G13 will have a metal uh, bar in here, so a strengthening uh, bar, so it looks like just like a, a triangle. So you'll have that on both sides for a G13. Also down below here, the hubs are usually filled with grease on a, on a Hetzer, uh, but on the G13 they're oil filled, so we have a oil plug. Obviously G13s have got the muzzle brake as well, and inside they've played around with the Travis mechanism, and then we have a different engine as well. Germany used all petrol engines, apart from one uh, armoured car, which was diesel, but they used petrol for everything else. This engine in here is the original Praga six cylinder, so this is a 7.8 litre uh, petrol engine. So it gives you about 158 horsepower. This could propel this vehicle at about 40 kilometres an hour. This is a great example of what a, uh, uh, what the crews would have gone through, how the, the seating arrangements are during World War II. Ah, son of a... Very confined, obviously, as I was saying, uh, with the driver, uh, the gunner. Uh, he's got his uh, siding system that pops up through here and it does uh, swivel around. Um, so this is the, uh, the SLF ZF1A site. So this has a times five magnification, I believe, but an eight degree field of view. But he, again, he, he can uh, move the side around as the gun moves around as well. Um, and then the commander has his uh, um, sights as well. But unfortunately for the commander, he has very poor vision out to the right side of the vehicle. Um, so you can have that ability for the allied vehicles to come around and uh, get you from the sides. Bit of a blind spot. Exactly. Yeah. And I see they also have a nice um, speaker here for the s cranking some Wagner. <laughs> yeah. Got some uh, dummy rounds, uh, 44 rounds on board uh, in this tiny little vehicle. It's good for the loader on this side to access these rounds, but he's also over your right shoulder. He's got more rounds over there, which oh, makes wow. it really difficult for him uh, to do it. So the commander would have to help him out in some respect. The only problem is then he's got to lean over the gun uh, to actually load the rounds. So in essence, I would have actually put the loader on that side um, and swap the commander around to this side. So hang on, I'm, I'm sitting on one seat and there's a seat in front of me here. So this is the gunner's seat. This is the gunner's, the gunner's seat. And where, where, whose seat am I on? So you're on the loader's seat. This so is where the loader sits. You imagine a gunner what? sitting here and you've got to manoeuvre these rounds up over the top of him, over the uh, the, the guard for the, the gun, into a, into the breach. And so, yeah, 100% the, the commander's definitely going to have to, like... Help him out. Help him out and load those. <laughs> Jeez. Because uh, you want your commander out to have a look and see what's going on. You want that the situational awareness. But if you now take the commander out to help the loader load rounds, you start to lose... Uh, or your vision of what's going on around your vehicle. Well, yeah, totally. Man. You get a lot of heat generated through here as well. So with this one, we have the uh, the Praga Wilson gearbox. Uh, so this is a pre-select gearbox. So it's like a, uh, a pre-select automatic, but driving it similar to a manual. So currently we have it in uh, neutral, and we also have reverse, and we have five speeds uh, in forward. So before you would even get in and start it up, you would press the button in, go to first gear, 
press your change pedal in and out, so it's not a clutch, it's a change pedal. Then you go to second gear and you go up all, all through the gears and then come back again. This just allows the oil to move through the, the gearing bands. So we obviously stay in uh, neutral. As we come up, sort of get into our steering, and this is pretty much uh, what it's like in the uh, Panzer 38T. So we have horizontal steering rather than a, a tiller. And if we look if just on the right hand side, we've got a button that we can push in. So if we just push, pull it back normally, it engages this one. So this is a really wide radius turn. If we engage the button, then this one moves. And this uh, gives us our narrow radius turn. So you can pretty much lock a track um, and, and turn around with it as well. And obviously same with the, the left side as well. Wow. Uh, but it is very easy to drive. The only issue is you've got a pretty big change pedal you got a tiny little accelerator. Oh wow! And then, and then the brake on the right hand side, and you've also got your your handbrake here as well. So you can imagine driving these. You've got your, your gearbox here, which obviously once it gets warm, it's given off heat. You've got your brakes here as well. So you've got brake dust that you can get as well. So oh, man. Um, it's just one of those hazards of operating an armoured vehicle. Yeah. At, at the end of World War Two, in the losing side. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> With uh, the driver, he's got his two. Um, vision blocks that he looks through. So pretty much a, a, an episcope as such, rather than a periscope, because a periscope can move generally on, on its axis. One's generally facing at a horizontal level, and the other one, the left one, is actually facing down uh, a little bit as well, so he can get that look down at the ground yeah, as okay. well to see where he's going. Um, and on the outside, you would probably would have seen in some of the shots, you've got some black painted spots as well, so they're all, all over, um, and that's to comp try and confuse the uh, the allies for where the actual driver's periscopes are. So it looks like there's four black uh, different periscopes. So ignition on. And hopefully she'll start.